Yeah. yeah, red line is our start, start finish line, and the timer should be ready to go. Dale has the essential angry bird on his robot. Eight, am I reading this right? 8.15, 8 8.15. 8 Slowly I turn. <laughs> Calibration, I presume that is, Ted? Yeah. Tell us about your robot, Ted, a little bit. Uh, uses a Arduino Mega, uses 32 line sensors. 32 line sensors. It seems to go better on the curves than on the straights. Yeah, it's kind of All right, well, we've got 12.92 seconds. 12.92. Ted also has remote start-stop capability with his robot for extra safety. And, oh, let's reset the timer for you. All right, we are ready when you are, Mike. This also has an Arduino Mega, is that correct? Correct. Smooth operation here. Uh, when, since we're running two rounds, sometimes the competitors will do one round where they're doing. I just want to finish. Being conservative, <laughs> and then the next round, turn up the speed, and yeah, if you crash, you crash, right? That's my plan. All right. <laughs> All right. So Mike's time is twenty-seven point two eight. 27.28. All right. And I am sorry, Allison, but we did not reset the timer. Do you want to just keep going or do you want to restart? I'll have it restart. Okay. Come back to me, little robot. All right. Sorry about that. Technical, technical problem. Okay, you were talking about your line sensor before we messed up. It has six sensors on it, and as you can see, the furthermost sensor is the line following. That's the only one being used for this competition, even though it has a bunch of other sensors. Cool. Moving out now. Yeah, it's kind of finicky. <laughs> Alright. Time is 23.39. 23.39. Interestingly, the fastest lap was the second lap, as you might have seen, guess from the being smoother at 10.35, so maybe around. Finding the line, okay. And finding the line. Finding the, that's all right. We're still on, you're still on track. <laughs> a little bit of oscillation here. Yeah, a lot but, of But uh, we're actually still going. And you'll notice that Lens Robot went a little bit off the line, but it, the logic was enough that it knew to go back to the line. So that was, that's pretty cool. A brief moment of going straight there. Very brief. That's all right. And, and all oh, oh. but we have still have human help allowed in this round, so we'll add five seconds to the score. And there's the first lap. <laughs> Uh-oh, what's up? Yeah. It's a low speed problem. Okay, we'll have to quit. All right, we'll wait for round two. Len may make some adjustments. So if anyone knows how to pronounce Polulu, uh, which is the website, polulu.com is where you can buy this. So a very, uh, very capable off-the-shelf robot. And let me get the timer reset for you. And we're ready, Frank. Calibration, and these robots are pretty quick for their size. Yeah, I warned you. Ten point three three, ten point three three. Right. Ooh, this robot looks like it has a off the shelf board called an Arduino. This is the biggest craze right now in robotics and hobbyists. 
the components are super cheap um, and allows people to get into electronics and robotics and software with minimal investment. All you need is a computer and a USB port. And that board that's on there, the, the mechanics are a little bit more, but the board on there is uh, you can get for about $20 and get started with the computer. You can also notice on the back, the LED indicators in the back kind of indicate where the line is relative to the sensors. And we invite everybody to uh, join the matches whenever, walk around and, and talk to everybody. It's We're here for you. This is what we do. We like to just show off what we got and spread the word about robotics and technology. And what kind of time do we have there? 54.09. Hey, it stayed on the line. All right. And it, yeah, it actually successfully traveled. The concern, of course, with this kind of robot is it might catch in the seams, but uh, it's perfect. So, so Line Mauler was built uh, some years back, uh, literally out of no parts were purchased specifically for Line Mauler. There's all sorts of junk bits and parts in here and parts off of old RC cars and an Arduino controller uh, and some custom, custom bits. Uh, it won... Uh, it's first competition years and years ago, and then I uh, told everybody how the software in this works, and so then ever since then everybody runs much faster than Line Mauler now. <laughs> so one of the neat things about the club is sharing and learning, and if somebody comes up with a good idea, uh, sharing that for the other, you know the rest of the crowd. I like how quiet yours is. Huh? It's very quiet. Oh, it's <laughs> right. 25.41. 25.41 for Line Mauler. Bot Choi is made of aluminum chassis, is that correct? Yep. And, uh,. A little bit of zigzaggy there, but wow, that was within about a quarter of an inch of the timing pylons. All right, and that was 12.72. 12.72. How many sensors were in the front of this robot? Uh, 32. 32. Is that good? Is that an advantage? Or is that just more for sensors to figure out what to do with? Um, I started with 16, and when I doubled it, I was able to increase my speed 20%. All right. Almost can't lose the line. We have 14.62. <laughs> is that Polymax 9000? As always, a strong contender. Largely because of the angry, angry birds working in the pit. All right, and we have 12.81. 12.81. New Nobot, or. So far, tracking is very nicely. Oh! Same behavior as that Yeah, I can't. Let's, let's I can't eliminate the spin. So. Pretty smooth. Did you make any uh, control adjustments for the advance? Before, the basic was wobbling uh, too much. Oh! oh. So there, the Unfortunately, in the brutal rules, that counts as a reversal. So I guess this is Len, Len is following the uh, example of some of the NASCAR guys. They always bring a spare vehicle to the races. Running quite smoothly. Hopefully we won't have any trouble on all of the discontinuities in the uh, in the track. And whoa! Wow! Stuck on the cross. The cross is difficult. Frank is taking the non-traditional opposite direction approach. 
running very smoothly through those uh, difficult zigzags. Crosses the crossing perfectly, and we have a few more turns to make. Perfect run, perfect run. We have 20.15, 20.15. Right, and here goes Line Mahler. Line Mahler in its history has only missed once, so we'll see. Hopefully, that'll still prove to be true. You may notice that the larger robots, um, many of them actually will stop a wheel or reverse a wheel whenever they are approaching these very sharp turns. Um, Smaller robots like Frank's 3Pi, these sharp turns, it hardly notices because the robot's so small. Um, but Line Mauler looks like it's into the finish 34.27. So you'll notice that some of the robots. Um, Stop for a calibration before chasing the line. Uh, Williams robot is not doing that. Um, line mollage is not. Uh, some others do. Uh, so, William, tell us a little bit about why. By the way, your time was 14.82. 14.82. Very good. Um, so, how is it that you're able to get by without calibrating? Uh, Basically, I, I calibrated earlier today, this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> calibrated this morning. Program. Ready when you are, Ted. We have, uh, I believe, four QQuest competitors. Is that correct? And that, Okay, so we have our bracket set up for that. All right, we'll be we'll be running that uh, first pairing of QQuest will be run after this. All right, time of 14.75, 14.75, very nicely run. Ted.